how do I make money from my drawings? Who is the highest paid artist in the world? Stay tuned and learn more about the lives of rich people. Hello dear friends, what should a successful artist be like? Is he talented? Not impossible. Scandalous if possible. Rich necessarily. Jeff Koons looks like a modest and neat 40-year-old clock. As is often the case, appearance is deceived. Koons is 55, about to have his seventh child, already has two grandchildren and the unofficial title of the most expensive living artist. In 2007, Ukrainian billionaire Viktor Pinchuk paid $23,600,000 for Koons' sculpture The Dangling Heart Purple. The Los Angeles County Museum of Art is ready to shell out $25 million for the train. If the price is right, it will be a one-time purchase record for museums. Well, the works of Koons is a find their buyers at a price of several million dollars. For example, Vase with Flowers, at an auction in May at Salt Bay, was sold for $2.3 million at an estimate of $1 million. At the same time, auction was established absolute world record for a work of art. For a painting by Pablo Picasso, nude green leaves and bust was paid $106.5 million. His parents sent little Jeff to study drawing at the age of seven, and the childhood hobby became a profession. Koons graduated from the Maryland Institute College of Art and the Art Institute of Chicago, after which he went to conquer New York. But with his art degrees, he could only get a job as a ticket seller at MOMA. Such an alignment didn't scare the future multimillionaire. He got a broker's license and went to work at the stock exchange, selling both securities and commodities. During the re-agonomics years, the financial sector was booming, and Koons was able to earn enough to realize his dream. To open an art factory. Koons creates the idea, and other people bring it to life. Earlier, the same scheme was used by Andy Warhol and before him Raphael and other masters. Koons became a real star of modern art in the 80s. At that time, there was no sex in Soviet Union, and Koons married the Italian porn star Cicciolina. Ilona Stola was so popular that she was elected to the Italian parliament and began to create explicit, others call them pornographic, sculptures made in heaven. Himself and his wife making love in various poses, Stola posed in the same clothes that she appeared in the movies. Then his work was worth only hundreds of thousands of dollars. A year later, the young couple had a son, but soon after the marriage fell apart, Stola took the child and left for Italy. The lawsuits lasted almost 20 years. Koons demanded to give the child to bring him up, Stola, millions in compensation, plus the sculptures for which he posed. The artists destroyed almost all of the unsold works, and in 2009, the Italian court of Cassation rejected Stola's demand. But Koons still hasn't seen his son. There is a saying in America, he is a very good businessman, he went bankrupt only three times. If you follow that logic, Koons is not just good, but a very good businessman. His company was on the verge of bankruptcy only once, in the 90s, but the artist businessman was able to rectify the situation, and business went uphill again. This year, Jeffrey Koons was given a new confirmation of his importance. An anonymous jury of BMW experts deemed him the most outstanding artist of our time, worthy of creating another, the 17th BMW art car. Previously, the famous Bavarian cars were painted by such gurus of modern art as Frank Stella, Roy Lichtenstein, and Andy Warhol. The car was presented on June 1 in Paris, in the main French Museum of Modern Art, Centre Pompidou. In 1977, the premiere of the BMW art car by Roy Lichtenstein also took place in this museum, which had just opened then. Unlike previous BMW art cars, Kunz's car is not painted, but covered with vanilla applique. According to the artist, this technique was chosen in order to speed up the process and have time to prepare the car for the June race in Le Mans. Several hundred journalists from all over the world flocked to Paris to see the BMW by Koons. In public, Koons is not trying to sound like a star. He always wears a formal suit, there is no posturing or exhalation, and he answers questions in a discreet, thoughtful but humorous manner. Koons' work is bold, voluptuous, and has astronomical price tags. 
but that hasn't diminished the appetite for his work in Asia, where he is showing at Art Basel, Hong Kong's premier event for wealthy collectors looking to acquire new symbols of wealth. The American pioneer brought to their fans several of his signature mirror polished steel sculptures, as well as his gazing ball series, in which shiny blue spheres are embedded in reproductions of classic European masterpieces, including works by Rembrandt and Tintoretto. Why would anyone pay $92,210,000 for Jeff Koons's rabbit? The sculpture Rabbit by Jeff Koons was purchased by billionaire Stephen Cohen. For the sculpture, he paid $91 million, a new auction record for the work of the living artist. The stainless steel rabbit sculpture was auctioned off by the family of the late media mogul Samuel Irving Newhouse Jr. Newhouse bought the rabbit in 1992 for about $1 million, fortune writes. The buyer of rabbit has not yet been known. Bidding on his behalf was art dealer Bob Mnuchin, the father of US Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. Not so long ago, it seemed that Cohen would no longer be able to afford art vanity fair rides. In 2013, Cohen's hedge fund, SAC Capital, admitted to insider trading charges and paid a $1.8 million fine. But on auction day, there was no room for sadness in the billionaire's life, according to the publication. Unremarkable looking Bob Mnuchin kept talking incessantly on his black cash or raven flip phone as the price went higher and higher. Vanity Fair describes how the auction went. In just a minute and a half from the start of bidding, the sculpture's price rose from $40 million to $60 million. The final total was $80 million, $91.1 million including taxes. How did Jeff Koons lose money? At first, it was Koons who was personally losing money. Even when he was doing something as simple as buying a Nike billboard and framing it, his quest for perfection caused Koons to spiral. Later, Koons' dealers, especially the long-suffering Jeffrey Deutsch, took the brunt of the blow. But then, once he had driven at least three dealers into bankruptcy, Koons rediscovered and perfected an entirely new art, the art of selling to collector items that don't really exist over and over again. Hughes's economic breakthrough and such a breakthrough was desperately needed if works like his magnificent Play-Doh wherever to be realized was kind of a financial innovation worthy of Bleed Masters and Peter Hancock, the JP Morgan bankers who invented credit derivatives. Or more importantly, it was an innovation worthy of Michael Dell who became a billionaire by turning the model of making computers and then making them. Other sculptors, such as Rodin, had done something similar in the past. They exhibited plaster or terracotta versions of their sculptures, which were then commissioned in stone or bronze and produced only after they were paid for them. But back then, the only difficulty in making them was the cost. Koons, by contrast, spent decades selling sculptures that he, at the time, had no idea how to make. Play-Doh is a prime example of this. It was built 20 years ago by Los Angeles soap opera mogul Bill Bell, but Play-Doh was and is the opposite of a simple assembly line sculpture. Koos tried to do something that no one had done before and he failed and failed again and failed again. And each time he picked himself up and kept working on it. In any reasonable art world, Koos's financial innovation would never have worked. Let's say you are willing to pay $20,000 for a work that costs $7,000 to make. You pay $20,000 up front and then you're told, hey, we had a huge cost overrun, please pay us another $20,000 or get your money back. You would just say, thank you, I'll get my money back. I was willing to pay $20,000 but I'm now willing to pay $40,000. But in the feverish upper echelons of the contemporary art market, prices can skyrocket overnight. Works of art are built at least in part because of their speculative value, and the amount someone is willing to pay for a piece depends largely on how much someone else is willing to pay for the same piece. Koons found that as long as his work appreciated, few collectors would give up a work they built at a lower price, even a work that did not exist. And if they did, it was no big deal, no full play. There was always a long line of new collectors who would be happy to take their place. Koons very cleverly found a way to exploit the market mentality that is now ubiquitous in the world of art. A way in which collectors are very aware of how much their art is worth. A 
as long as collectors could reliably believe that they had made money from their non-existent works of art, they were usually happy to keep financing them, in Bell's case for about 20 years. Koons, more than any other artist, has taken advantage of the new opportunities that come with being able to charge 7 or even 8 figures per prize. His art is like the new luxury apartment buildings being built in Manhattan, which only make financial sense when the houses inside can sell for more than $5,000 a square foot. Koons' art may be hollow, it may be tried, but Koons is doing something very interesting that very few other artists do. He's turning money into art not just turning art into money. Are you real art connoisseur?